Hi everyone, welcome back to this series called Finance Current Affairs, where we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before I move on to the first question, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, then please do subscribe and hit the bell icon so that whenever a new video comes up, you can be notified about the same. If you want the free PDFs of these sessions, then you can join our Telegram group. The link is in the description below. Moving on to the first question now, which says, LEI has been introduced by RBI in a phased manner for participants in the OTC derivatives, non-derivative market, large corporate borrowers and large value transactions in the centralized payment systems. It is, by it I mean LEI, is a dash digit number to uniquely identify the parties to financial transactions worldwide. So here we have to first understand what is LEI, what does LEI stands for, what do we mean by LEI and what RBI has to do as far as the LEI is concerned. So let's first discuss that and then we'll come back to the question and answer it. So LEI stands for Legal Entity Identifier. As the full form suggests, it's basically an identification number given to the entities. So different parties carry out the financial transactions worldwide. The companies might be involved in, uh, in different current or capital, out, capital transactions. There might be different kinds of payments which are made worldwide. So if a number is given to the entities to identify them, then we can keep a track of the financial transactions going between them. So if you allot a company to a number, then that number will be mentioned in every transaction when there is a financial transaction. So this will be a record of what transactions are happening. Usually this number is used for the large value transactions. Like if there are various large amount, borrowers who are borrowing in large amounts or there are some large value transactions which are happening. So those transactions require you to mention the LEI number. Through that, a track record can be kept about the transaction, the financial transaction that is going on. When you track that how much amount is transferring, how much amount is transferring between two entities, ke beech, then obviously you can assess if that transaction is correct or not, what's the quality of that transaction, how accurate is it, okay, whether all the risk management uh, rules, regulations which are there are properly being adhered to or not. So this way you can improve the accuracy of your financial systems, you can strengthen their efficiency, you can improve on the risk management systems as well. So that's the role of a legal entity identifier. So I, I, uh, what RBI did was it introduced this LEI for various participants, the ones who participate in over-the-counter derivative markets, in non-derivative markets. Then it also introduced it for certain large borrowers, ones who are borrowing in huge amount or the ones who are engaged in large value transactions. For them, RBI introduced having a legal entity identifier and quoted in the transactions happening between them. So, alag-alag type ke participants ke liye mandatory kiya tha RBI ne ki unko ye number mention karna hoga apni large value transactions mein jis mein wo enter kar rahe hain. What RBI has notified recently? In order to better utilize the benefits of LEI, it has done something which the authorized dealer category 1 banks have to undertake. So what are authorized dealer category 1 banks? They are certain banks which have been given the license by RBI to deal in the foreign exchange. So jo bhi banks ko permission hai RBI ke end mein ki wo foreign exchange kharid sakte hai, sell kar sakte hai, foreign current, for foreign exchange mein basically jo deal kar sakte hai, wo hai AD category 1 banks. So RBI ne unko kuch notify kiya hai. RBI has told them that from 1st October 2022 onwards, they will obtain this LEI number from the resident entities which undertake the current and capital account transactions of 50 crore or above. So, Jobi resident entities are here, individuals ki baat nahi ki jari, entities ki baat ki jari hai. Jobi resident entities are here, who koi bhi current ya capital account transaction karti hai, jiski value 50 crores hai, usse zada hai, yani ki large value transaction hai, who, us case mein. जो भी authorized dealer banks हैं, उनको उन entities से LEI number की details fetch करनी होगी। So the LEI number details of that entity need to be fetched by the authorized dealer banks when the transactions involve a huge amount of 50 crore or more. 
Next is that these AD category 1 banks might encourage the entities to voluntarily furnish this even before October 2022. So AD category 1 banks ko in entities ko jo pe resident entities hai jo huge amount ke transactions kar rahe hai inko encourage karna hai ki 1st October kya usse pehle hi agar wo voluntarily LEI uh, apna details share kar sakte hai ap to wo kare. In fact, these banks need to encourage the entities to obtain the LEI numbers as soon as possible if they have not done so. Agar in entities ki transaction 50 crore ke zada ke ho rahe hai, abhi tak inho ne wo LEI number apne liye obtain nahi kiya hai, to wo jaldi se jaldi kare. Okay, and once they obtain it, they should provide the details to the AD category 1 banks even before the actual implementation date of 1st October. Okay, so once an entity obtains this number, irrespective of the size of transaction, it has to report about it in all transactions. Although an entity if is going through a transaction of 50 crore or more, need to provide the LEI number details. The AD category 1 bank will fetch such details. But once you have obtained this LEI number, even if the transaction value is of lesser amount you and you are undertaking those transactions, then you have to mention about this number. You need to report your this number in that very transaction. Bhale hi aapka transaction ka size per kam ho, ek bar aapne LEI number obtain kar liya, to aapko aapne saare transactions mein uski detail share karni hoogi ki ye hamara legal entity identification number hai. AD category 1 banks should have the systems to capture this information and ensure that it is validated against the global LEI database. So Global Legal Entity Identifier Foundation, this very foundation keeps a database of all the LEIs. Okay. So the AD category, category 1 banks need to validate that whichever entity has given the LEI number, it actually matches with the global database that is maintained. Wo sahi hai ki nahi. Entities can obtain this number from where? Ab kisi entity ko LEI number obtain karna hai kyunki uski transaction 50 crore se zada ki hai. So if they are undertaking a 50 crore or more transaction, they have to obtain LEI. From where can they get this LEI? In India, there is a firm called Legal Entity Identifier India Limited. So it is an RBI recognized, it's a RBI recognized firm which issues the LEIs. So if any firm wants to uh, get this num this identification number issued, then it can approach this very firm. So this was all that I wanted to discuss. Coming back to our question, it's a dash digit number. So we just discussed it's a 20 digit number which is allotted to the entities. Overall objective is to enhance the uh, quality of our financial systems and the risk management capabilities to make them more efficient. Now coming to the second question, which says, which of the following correctly states the inflation levels for November 2021? So for every month, the inflation data is released and every month we cover this topic, right? So now December is going on and the inflation related data for the month of November is out. We have to identify that which of these options correctly states the CPI and the WPI inflation levels for November. So let's discuss about them. CPI, first of all, talking about the retail level inflation, which is assessed through the consumer price index, it quickened to a three month high value. Retail inflation, fir teen month ki highest uh, point pe poch kai hai, and in the month of November, it was at 4.91%. So, is November month ka jo CPI hai, wo 4.91% raha. Last Time when I discussed about inflation or in one or the other session, I talked about this thing that we might see the inflation going down because we have seen a major cut in the fuel related prices. Okay, fuel taxes pe bohat major cut aya just for this he expected that ab inflation nahi, matlab, or ye rate nahi badega. But still we see it's at a three month high value. What has been the reason behind the rise which has offset the effect of cut in the fuel taxes. The major reason behind the rise in CPI is the food inflation. Food related prices kafi bade hai jis wajay se hamara CPI bada despite of the fact ki hamare fuel taxes mein ek major cut aya tha. 
सो फूड इन्फ्लेशन की अगर हम बात करें तो ये पिछले महीने तक 0.85 थी जो नवंबर में बढ़ के वन परसेंट पे पहुंच गई सो द मेजर रीजन बिहाइंड द राइज इन सी पी आई इज द राइज इन दूड इन्फ्लेशन फ्रॉम दिस वेरीग्राफ यू कैन सी द मेजर रीजन इज द राइजिंग फूड इन्फ्लेशन सो डिस्पाइट ऑफ दिस 4.91 परसेंट इज द इन्फ्लेशन लेवल विच इज विद इन दी आरबीआई टारगेट ऑफ टू टू सिक्स परसेंट आपको ये नहीं भूलना है कि आरबीआई का टारगेट लेवल या टॉलरेंस बैंड किया है इन्फ्लेशन का इट्स बिटवीन टू टू सिक्स परसेंट राइट सो फोर पॉइंट नाइन परसेंट इज विद इन दिस वेरी लेवल अर्लियर इफ वी टॉक अबाउट द सी पी आई लेवल इन दीवियस मंथ प्रायर टू नवंबर सो इट वॉज एट फोर पॉइंट फोर एट इन अक्टूबर इन सेप्टेम्बर इट वॉज एट फोर पॉइंट थ्री फाइव ओके तो सेप्टेम्बर में फोर पॉइंट थ्री फाइव थी अक्टूबर में थोड़ी सी बढ़ के फोर पॉइंट फोर एट हुई और नवंबर में ये और बढ़ के फोर पॉइंट नाइन वन परसेंट हुई प्रीवियसली ऑल्सो द मेजर फैक्टर बिहाइंड द राइज इन इन्फ्लेशन वॉज द राइजिंग फूड एंड द फ्यूल प्राइजेज ओनली इस बार फ्यूल प्राइजेस मेजर रीजन नहीं रहा बट फूड प्राइजेस स्टिल मेजर रीजन है इन्फ्लेशन होने के या इन्फ्लेशन के रेट में और राइज आने के Now coming to the WPI, the wholesale level inflation. ये भी काफी ज्यादा बढ़ गया है In fact, 2011-12 को base year लेके उस series को लेके जब से हमने inflation calculate करना शुरू किया है उस पूरी series का ये highest level है inflation का around 12, 10 to 12 years मत के around 10 to 12 years की highest point पे है ये WPI का rate इस बार so wholesale level inflation the wpi rose to 14.23 percent if i talk about the previous month in october it was at 12.54 percent and it has increased to 14.23 percent this month so in this very graph you can see how we have seen a major rise in the wpi levels right so what have been the major reasons behind this rise food prices especially the prices of the vegetables then the minerals and the petroleum products have been the reason behind the rise in wpi so kya factors hai high rate of inflation ke november 2011 mein rise in the prices of mineral oils rise in the prices of basic metals crude petroleum natural gas chemicals food products all these factors together contribute to the rise in wpi okay so this is as i have already told it's the highest level of wholesale inflation in 2011 12 series and if we compare it with the previous months so it was 12.5% in october in fact if i talk about november 2020 it was at a 2.29% rate ab wo double digit mein hua aur highest value pe pahunch gaya hai is saal 14.23 pe so 2020 november mein 2.29% jo inflation thi wo 2021 mein double digit mein bhi highest point pe pahunch chuki hai All right. So this was the inflation-related data. Now coming back to the question, the correct answer is option D. That CPI is 4.91 percent, and the WPI is the is at a 14.23 percent rate. Now coming to the third question. It says, who has issued a discussion paper on regulating algorithmic al algorithmic or the algo trading in India? proposing each algo strategy whether used by broker or client to be approved by the exchange so this question is easy it's about trading and uh, the word exchange and trading involved here takes us to the regulatory body called sebi which regulates this market okay so the answer to this question is option b sebi let's discuss a bit about the algorithmic trading or the algo trading in india and what sebi proposes related to that So recently, SEBI has come up with a discussion paper which talks about like regulating the algo trading in India. So, what is algo trading? Let's first understand this. It refers to orders generated at a super fast speed by the use of mathematical models involving automated execution of trade. We might want to buy or sell the securities. We want that if the price reaches this very level, then our security should be sold. or if the price reaches this very level then our securities should be bought if we personally call the broker ask him to sell by the time we call and ask him to sell it might happen that the prices would change so if we could priorly give the instructions and on reaching that level our trade gets executed then we might profit a lot 
So when the mathematical models, the computer programs are used to basically carry out your transaction without manually doing out the things, that is algorithmic trading. Okay, aapko uh, manually initiate nahi karna padega order, aapko manually track nahi karna padega ki price bad gaya ki kam hua, jitna aapko chahiye tha, utna ho gaya ki nahi, aur ab aapko sell karna hai ki buy karna hai, wo aapko manually nahi karna padega, ek software ya mathematical model usko prices ko track karega, aur jaise hi price aapki range mein aa jayenge, jitne pe aap karidha chate aur sell karna chate ho, aapko order process ho jayega. That is algorithmic trading. So it's basically like, uh, asking a broker to buy or sell the shares but instead of the broker doing the things manually the mathematical model will perform the operations okay so algorithms use the user data the behavior usage patterns and they take the pre-specified instructions to achieve certain goals so aap pehle instructions de dete ho aur uske according jab price is pochenge to aapka wo bhi jo bhi deal hai wo process ho jayegi so the algorithm the algo trading system automatically monitors your livestock prices and it initiates the order when the, when the given criteria are met aap pehle instructions de doge wo instructions jab meet ho rahe honge wo criteria jab meet ho raha hoga aapki transaction process ho jayegi isse fayda kya hai what's the benefit this frees the trader from having to monitor the livestock prices and initiate manual order placement aapko live track nahi rakhna padega stock prices ko aur jab aapki matlab ka price aayega aapka criteria meet hoga tab aapko manually order process nahi karna padega automatically the things will go on so oh, the significant price changes can be avoided because the orders can be executed within the seconds this is one of the major benefits of algo trading now what has sebi proposed sebi wants to regulate this algo trading even in a more better manner now at times you give the order to the uh, broker and brokers have their own algos running and they process the transaction okay they give the pre-specified instructions and whenever the price reaches your criteria the transaction gets processed but other than those brokers running the algos they at times the orders are also coming from the apis and uh, SEBI wants to treat those APIs also like an algo order and regulate it. So, kuch transactions broker ke algo se na run ho ke APIs ki through ho rahe hain aur SEBI chata hai ki wo bhi algo order ki tarah regulate kiye jaye. What do I mean by APIs? Now, it's like an interface. If you want to communicate with your broker and get your transaction processed, then that can happen through, through a third party application as well. That third party application is not regulated. So now SEBI wants to regulate that as well. API is an interface that can be used to program the software which interacts with the existing application. So what will happen here? You will establish a connection with your broker with a third party application. Ka use karke. Many brokers in India have started providing the application programming interface access to their clients that establishes an online connection between the broker and the client. So it allows to use a third party application which suits your needs. Third party application could be regulate kiya jai, uske through bhi jo ye orders process ho rahe, unhe regulate kiya jai. This is what SEBI wants. I'll be discussing the reason why SEBI wants that. Okay, so for each algo strategy, if you are running the algos, if you are doing the transactions through the APIs as well, Everything will now require an approval from the exchange. So each algo strategy, whether the broker uses it or the client uses it, has to be approved by the exchange. Stock exchanges need to develop such a system which will ensure that only those algos that have been approved by the exchange are actually being deployed. So jinko approval mila hai, wohi algos run ho, wohi orders process ho, uske alawa na process ho. Isse kya benefits hai aur SEBI aisa kyo chata hai? SEBI wants to take this step in order to reduce the risk to the market. There are many unregulated, unapproved algos and if they run, they pose a lot of risk. People might be manipulating the prices, they might be uh, manipulating their investors to invest, promising them good returns which they might actually not get. Okay, so luring the customers with a wrong intention, posing a risk to the market, that can be mitigated through this step. Also, if you, you are doing some transaction through a third party app, okay, and that 
uh, because it was not regulated you suffered some kind of a loss so there will be no grievance redressal mechanism where your issue can be redressed so if that is brought under the ambit of sebi then you will have a redressal mechanism where your grievances could be handled okay so potential losses in case of failed algo strategy could be huge since third party algo providers are unregulated so agar third party providers bhi regulate kiye jayenge to aapko us dealing mein koi bhi issue aayega aapki grievance redress ki jayegi proper grievance redressal mechanism ke through this will protect the retail investors it will boost their confidence to undertake the algo trading and it will also help curb the price manipulation all right so these are few benefits with, with uh, because of which sebi wants to regulate the algo trading in a more efficient manner now coming to the last question it says what does it refer to so yahan pe it jo hai ye kis cheez ko refer kar raha hai so let's see what is it all about it is a window for the banks to borrow overnight from rbi in an emergency when the interbank liquidity dries up completely so if you are thorough with the rbi website you can easily answer this question if you um, are aware about the monetary policy tools and some related facts and figures then you can easily answer this so when is that if you if a bank wants to borrow from rbi then the rate at which it can borrow is the repo rate so we have the uh, repo rate uh, available at which the rbi can offer the loans to the banks then we also have a bank rate at which you can you as a bank can borrow for long term from rbi and there is one more facility which can be used up in case of emergencies रेपो रेट में तो क्या हो गया जरूरत पड़ी तो आरबीआई से लोन ले लिया किसी रेट पे इस एक विंडो और होती है जिसमें आप इमरजेंसी के केस में ओवरनाइट आरबीआई से पैसा बोरो कर सकते हो ये कब यूज होता है जब आपकी इंटरबैंक लिक्विडिटी मार्केट जो है वो ड्राई अप हो जाती है दैट वेरी फैसिलिटी इज कॉल्ड एम एस एफ मार्जिनल स्टैंडिंग फैसिलिटी ये आपको ओवर नाइट इमरजेंसी के केसेस में आर से बोरो करने की फैसिलिटी प्रोवाइड कर करने वाली एक फैसिलिटी है जो रेपो रेट से ज्यादा इंटरेस्ट रेट पे आपको लोन दिलाती है सो द आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑप्शन ए लेट्स सी व्हाट इज एमएसएफ अ बिट मोर इन डिटेल एंड देन वी विल सी व्हाट आरबीआई हैज रिसेंटली नोटिफाइड अबाउट द सेम सो एज क्वेश्चन मेंशंस इट्स अ विंडो टू बोरो ओवरनाइट फ्रॉम आरबीआई इन केस ऑफ इमरजेंसी सो ये फैसिलिटी इमरजेंसी के केसेस में अवेलेबल है जब इंटरबैंक लिक्विडिटी मार्केट ड्राई अप हो जाती है जब बैंक के पास और कोई जरिया नहीं बचता पैसा रेस करने का तो वो एम एस एफ फैसिलिटी के अंदर आर बी आई से एक हायर रेट पे लोन ले सकता है बैंक बोरो फ्रॉम आर बी आई बाई प्लेजिंग द गवर्नमेंट सिक्योरिटीज एट अ रेट ग्रेटर देन द रेपो रेट यहाँ भी आप सिक्योरिटीज प्लेज करके लोन ले सकते हो अब आपको लगेगा कि रेपो रेट में भी आप सिक्योरिटीज प्लेज करके लोन ले रहे हो एम एस एफ में भी आप सिक्योरिटीज प्लेज करके लोन ले रहे हो वॉट्स द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द टू बोथ ऑफ देम इन्वॉल्व प्लेजिंग द सिक्योरिटीज एंड रेजिंग द फंड फ्रॉम आर बी आई सो वॉट्स द डिफरेंस One is that MSF rate is a bit higher than the repo rate. Okay, then repo rate can be used in normal situations, but MSF facility is available only in case of emergencies. So if you have no other option available, if you want to borrow overnight, your interbank liquidity market had has dried up, then only you can use this MSF facility. Second difference is that the rep that the banks can pledge government securities from the SLR quota under MSF. so what happens is that you cannot borrow as much money as you want there is a maximum limit specified okay so certain percentage of your net demand and time deposits is the amount which you can borrow this was 1% it increased to 2% then in during covid it also increased to 3% so what happens under slr you need to maintain certain liquid cash gold jaise crr mein आपको कैश की रिजर्व्स रखनी होती है लाइक इन केस ऑफ सी आर आर यू नीड टू मेंटेन द कैश रिजर्व इन केस ऑफ एस एल आर यू नीड टू मेंटेन सर्टन लिक्विड कैश सर्टन सर्टन काइंड ऑफ सिक्योरिटीज मोर लिक्विड सिक्योरिटीज गोल्ड एंड ऑल ओके सो यू नीड टू कीप दैट एज रिजर्व बट इन केस ऑफ एम एस एफ वॉट यू कैन डू यू कैन प्लेज द सिक्योरिटीज विच यू हैव केप्ट kept in slr so aap slr mein jo aapne securities as a reserve rakhi hai unko aap pledge kar sakte ho aur msf ke under loans le sakte ho so up to certain percentage that is allowed 
एंड इवन इफ योर एस एल आर कम्स बिलो द रिक्वायर जो भी आर बी आई ने मिनिमम एस एल आर की रिक्वायरमेंट बताई है जो टाइम टू टाइम चेंज भी हो सकती है उससे अगर आपका कम भी एस एल आर चला जाएगा जब आप एम एस एफ में वो सिक्योरिटीज प्लेज कर रहे हो तब भी आपको पेनल्टी नहीं देनी पड़ेगी ये एक डिफरेंस है एम एस एफ और रेपो रेट में सो दी आर बी आई एज अ टेम्परेरी मेजर इंक्रीज द बोरोइंग लिमिट टू थ्री परसेंट ऑफ द नेट डिमांड एंड टाइम लाइबिलिटीज जो दो परसेंट तक का आप एन डी टी एल का अमाउंट एम एस एफ के अंदर बोरो कर सकते थे वो तीन परसेंट कर दिया गया था कोविड के टाइम पे नाउ वॉट इज द चेंज दिस फैसिलिटी वेयर यू कैन डिप इन टू योर एस एल आर एंड गेट दी लोन्स फ्रॉम एम अंडर एम एस एफ फ्रॉम आर बी आई वॉज अलाउड अप टू थ्री परसेंट ऑफ योर नेट डिमांड एंड टाइम लाइबिलिटीज ओके नाउ वॉट हैज बीन डन ये चीज जो फैसिलिटी थी ये दिसंबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन तक एक्सटेंड कर दी गई थी पहले जून ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी तक अलाउड था इसको बढ़ा के दिसंबर एंड तक कर दिया गया था फिर गवर्नर ने रिसेंटली अनाउंस किया कि अब हम नॉर्मल डिस्पेंशन पे आ जाएंगे गवर्नर अनाउंस दैट वील नाउ रिटर्न टू द नॉर्मल डिस्पेंशन विच इज एट टू परसेंट सो नाउ इफ द बैंक वॉन्ट टू रेज लोन्स फ्रॉम आर बी आई अंडर दी एम एस एफ फैसिलिटी बाई डिपिंग इन टू देयर एस एल आर देन दे आर अलाउड टू डू सो अप टू टू परसेंट ऑफ एन डी टी एल इंस्टेड ऑफ थ्री परसेंट सो आप अपनी सिक्योरिटीज जो आपने एस एल आर के तौर पर रिजर्व में रखी है उनको भी एम एस एफ के अंडर प्लेज करके अप टू टू परसेंट ऑफ एन डी टी एल तक का लोन जो है वो आर बी आई से ओवर नाइट रेज कर सकते हो सो दिस वॉज ऑल दैट आई वॉन्टेड टू डिस्कस With this I would like to end up this session thank you so much